Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, right, the first thing we're gonna do is just take attendance. Um, here is the QR code for today. The number of the day is 72. Um, so before we actually get to, um, I guess, what the main portion of what today is, we're going to first do the rest of the demo that we didn't get to last class. Um, I have Jessie here over on Zoom because she's feeling a little sick today. So she's going to do the demo over Zoom. Um, Okay. 
something like that, or, or whatever message, or even like they have a dialogue coming up saying, oh, there's something wrong with the internet or whatever, that your request is not success is successfully made. So now we want, we want to test whether or not all of the requests have been successfully made. Since now I can check out something that you're communicating with the back, back end. It's a bunch of data that you cannot really get an instant memorization from the front end, always, like if you don't set it up. There is a really helpful tool that Android Studio provides that will help you to be able to virtualize all of your requests, whether it's get requests or uh, post requests. So um, that would be in app inspection. So let me know if you guys can find it. But basically, it's on the bottom toolbar, and then you click App Inspection. You go over here to select whatever emulator that you are using. And then you can start by running the emulator. And then there's a thing called Network that you can see all the signal that's getting sent out and getting received by your emulator. Wow. Okay, so let's, oh, oops. What's wrong? Okay, so let's post it. In case I can't say something, it's not working. Check the log cap, maybe? Is there something going on? Oh, okay. Wow. Then they were saying that there's like it's being like it seems like a signal that's being sent to the computer and then it's being collected. Like this, you will see what exact um what exact URL that's being sent and then if you click into it, um you're gonna see more details about this. For example, like what are the response? What's overview like? What's the what? What kind of um, message is being sent out? I think we missed the get request because it was in the beginning. See if there's any called get get something. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a scan with the code because I don't think there's anything in the over here. Yeah, I should have probably had my other project on this emulator, but but it's like the only thing I need to know is that when.
whenever you are doing some like post and friend request, you can go over here and just look at whatever signal that's being sent out and then click on this way. It's a great tool to pick up. Um, the next thing I would like to do a demo on is it also relates to your homework, but um, it's, it's about how to create a single singleton class. Um, in this case, we'll be creating a repository class that will help you to store data persistently. So let's go to where your colon was. Our repository. And then as we talked about, a single class always has a parent requester. So What makes it to be able to give like a global data that, that gets stored is this thing called container object. We're going to have whatever data you want to store inside this container object. So in this case, we'll be storing a node list that have all the local, like it stores locally on your phone all the nodes that you have been created. Like, this is not something that you store on the cloud. This is local to the app. Okay. So, as part of the homework, you will need to, <coughs> so you will need to, like, go to edit, and you will need to go to local node activity and be able to access like the local nodes. So let's see how we can access it. Yeah, I actually have something here. I'll comment it out. So basically how we access it, it would just be repository.nodeless, which will give you this data that you stored. And then I pass it in to this node adapter. It's basically a recycle wheel adapter. And then I pass into the second thing. Um, so how would you like now now like it's all about how would you send this? What you need to do is like first you create a first you need to create a node that you have made change. And then, this, inside this um, added node activity, we have something over here containing like whatever node content it is right now. And then this button, once you click it, it will save the new nodes lo uh, locally. So basically, we will get whatever text that's contained in this text field and then create this new node object. In this case, we'll also pass in an ID that has been sitting here. And we'll make sure that it's not null. So to store it in, inside this um, repository, all you need to do is repository dot list. Add, 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 add notes. Or you can do something like find this previous notes made by this author, like this poster, and then change it to them. That also works. But you just treat it as a neutral list at this point, and then you can just change it whatever way you want. Um, can I mention something before you move on? Yeah. Um, do you mind going back to the repository class? Right, so this is another way where you can craft like singletons in Kotlin where you have the private constructor and, and then the companion object. I think in lecture, I mentioned that you can use the object keyword. So there's two ways that you can kind of craft um, 
singletons this way offers more flexibility because you can actually pass in arguments to your singleton. But yeah, so there's two flavors. You can just pick which one you prefer, I guess, or which one you need that's, that you need to use. to go to the wall and then go to the um, So it's saying it's dirty because I have stored in the control. So if I do something, like if I make a, a, a key that I have, I've never saved anything like this before, it will return me to the wall. 
Wow. Yeah, there's just few ways that you can do physical work. Okay, that's all we have for the rest of the session. Oh. I'll talk to you first. All right, thank you so much for that enlightening document. So what, so yeah, the main discussion for today is just demoing a little bit of Postman. So what exactly is Postman? Um, Postman is an application used for API testing. Um, it's an HTTP client that tests HTTP requests using a graphical user interface. So that kind of makes it very easy for users to help navigate and test endpoints. So the first thing I'll do before I demo is just help you guys install it so you guys can kind of um, work along with me. So installing is rather easy. You just go to Google, right? Postman. It should be like the first link. I'll download Postman as well. It's very convenient. And then download Postman. And then there's equivalent links for Windows and then Mac down here. So I'll give you guys. That's okay. So I have, um, so this is kind of like when, I don't know what it looks like when you first, I guess, launch Postman. But if you go to on the side here, collections, you can kind of set up a lot of different requests. So here I kind of set up this basic. Um, so this basic backend here with this like URL here. So you can put your URL up here and then you can test the equivalent um, methods here. We've only covered get and post, but posting offers a lot more that you can do. You can do like, for example, you can do deleting. I think they have deleting, put, copy head. There's a lot of different requests that you can do, but we'll just focus on get and post today. I don't know if you guys can see the URL. Oh, okay. Right, so I have this URL of some backend, right? Um, so let's see what happens if I try getting something. Oh, it gives me back. So in the bottom here, you'll see the response. In this case, it's just hello world. Usually hello world is like the basic kind of first programming language, first exposure or something, usually what's given back to you. In this case, we have a hello world to be printed back at us doing a get request. Um, and the next thing you can do is with, so sometimes with get requests, sometimes you'll have parameters at the end of your URL especially if you're working off of like some like some API on the web, usually they require you to have some type of um, parameters. Usually at the end of URLs too, you can physically see the parameters as well. So I'll pull up, where's Postman? In this case, Postman doesn't have any URLs. Let's see if, oh. Oh yeah, so you see, this is an example query parameter. It has this like edit hashtag slide equals ID, that's an example parameter. And you can add parameters in Postman for a get request by just having these like query params here. Um, so in this case, I'll just give it a key of, uh, I'll do ID and I'll give it one, two, three, four, five or something. Same thing with, I'll give another ID, let's say name, I'll give it my name. And it just automatically formats it nice and neat for us. And this, this will come in hand, I guess I'll showcase later, where you can kind of do with query parameters. Um, all right, and it gives it right back at us. Sometimes, like if a website isn't as secure, sometimes they'll also have like the username and password under the query param. So sometimes they'll have, if you will submit a post request or a get request, they'll have like the true parameters for using and password directly in your URL. And that's not as safe because anyone who intercepts your networking or see your networking request will see this URL and they can physically see your username and password. So how do you get around that is that you do post requests instead of having 
information directly posted in, I guess, the, embedded in the URL, because that isn't as secure. And then we opt for a post request instead. So I, I have um, another request set up here that just has posts. Um, and I have a basic, right. So usually the thing with post requests as well is that they require some like request body. And usually the request body is in JSON. So you can also do that just as well in Python. I mean, not Python, in Postman. Um, so right now I have it set to text but I can also set it to JSON, and that'll give me the nice key value plus the nice highlighting of the colors as well to help delineate the key value pairs in this JSON. And then if I try sending it, so what do I get? I'll get the, in this case, this back end just returns um, the name and the ID back. So you might run into the issue where your request may be formatted as a text, where it'll look like this. So if you want to change it to a JSON, you can easily just change it here into a JSON, and it'll prettify it to look like the JSON format. So yeah. So that's how you can do a GET request, simple GET request and simple POST request. We can specify the body in this tab here. Um, so let's see what's next. Right, so I have another um, another request here. This time it's pinging the JSON URL. So let's see what this does. Right, it's just showcasing, in this case, it's just a simple GET request that instead of, I remember last time, it was to return the parameters back to us. In this case, it's just kind of what you'll see typically, where if you give some GET requests, you'll get some response back. This is just an example of response of what you might get. In this case, as I said earlier, usually servers will respond back to you in some form of JSON. So this is literally a JSON given back from the server request that we just submitted here. In this case, it just has this simple format. So then if I wanted to somehow parse this in Android, I would use something like Moshi or Moshi to help get what these two different things are using some model class or of some sort. Nice, okay. And then the last thing I'll showcase is um, kind of a real life example. Here I have um, the Google Maps API. Um, so what's also really nice about Postman as well is that Sometimes when you're using APIs online, you'll have to you'll have to have some kind of special API key that specifies that ties the API usage to I guess some kind of account or your specific usage. So in this case, I have an API key here. In this case, it's hidden because it's a, it's meant to be kept secret. But you can specify keys or anything of the sort in this tab here, environment. I won't showcase that because the key might leak. And I think this is actually a key that's in use, so I won't show what it does. But in this case, it's a simple get request. And here I have like the query parameters in use, where I have like the keys and the, the equivalent values, and it places it in the URL as such. So let's try sending this and see what it does. Right, so in this case, this is this API gives me, so if I have a query, it kind of gives me places that are nearby that match the description of that query. So in this case, I gave it a query of um, in and out like the burger restaurant, and I gave it a location centered around, I think this is San Francisco. Um, so it's just giving me a bunch of locations that kind of match what that is. In this case, this is like, a, just, as I said, a JSON has all of these different responses back at us. So in this case, I have in and out in Jefferson Street, San Francisco, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's like kind of a short demo of how you can use Postman as a way to test your backend. So if sometimes you never, sometimes when you're working on an Android app, 
it can be frustrating because you don't know if either the back end is down, so you don't know, because sometimes the back end ruins functionality on the front end. So this is a quick way to kind of determine, oh, if the specific endpoint is working, I can, I can detect that really quick using Postman, see if it's working, and I know that for sure that it's not a back end issue. Instead, it's a front end issue. So now I can debug it on the front end instead of bugging the back end to try and fix the issue. So it offers a nice quick way to test um, back end endpoints. Yeah. Right, so now I kind of have a fun challenge for you guys of testing, I guess, the usage of Postman. So let me switch back to Google Slides. Okay. All right, so it's the same domain, it's the same URL, but in this case, I introduced um, two new routes. Essentially, I want you guys to try and figure out the challenge. So the challenge kind of has to do with these two routes, and I'll showcase kind of what it's looking like right now. So if I go back to Postman, Oh gosh. Go back to Postman here. Oh gosh, Postman. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, Postman. So we'll go back to Postman here. Um, I have this message class, and if I try getting a request, it says, you never figure out how to change me. So I want you guys to try and figure out how you can change this message using um, the basics of get and post request and then this secret here, this other secret um, path, API path. Um, so yeah. See if we can change this message somehow. Right, here's the URL again, if you can see. Why is it supposed to? There we go. Okay.
Oh, looks like someone changed that. Wow. So it says, ha ha, who did this? <laughs> Wait, you might have changed it because it only, did, it only does one message. Oh, wow. It's nice. They figured it out. Um, I guess I can showcase kind of the solution. Right. So if we try going to secret, let's try executing this other route that I gave you. Let's try executing the get request. So it says, oh, let me move the camera. It says, please include your name and the ID in your get request. So you have to somehow include that. And I showcase that you can use um, curate parameters here. So this, I already have it set up to be my name and the ID. So let's try that. Let's try sending it. What do I get? Oh, I get the secret key. I love networking. Nice. Let's try copying this over. Right, so now we can go back to message here. In this case, get retrieves a message, right? So we have to somehow post the message instead because it only does one thing. So we go back here to post. We have our body here. So let's execute this message and see what it says. So this is um, a request with no body. So let's see what it gives us. It says wrong message, wrong slash wrong secret password, please try again. So that gives an inclination that we have to pass in the bodies, the message somehow. In this case, I have a JSON. So we have a message here, message. Well, now we're be able to back this. And then our secret is add networking. Let's try. True. Okay, let's try getting it now. Right, so now we said we are we're actually able to set the message. So, yeah. Um, I guess the last thing that I'll do for today is just introduce the homework. So let me switch back to that. Where did I have it? Oh, I closed it. Hold on. All right, and one thing I want to mention before is be on the lookout for an announcement about the hack challenge. We're still figuring out the timing and the placement for that. We'll have some like preliminary forms you guys have to fill out before the actual um, kickoff ceremony. So we'll probably post something on Ed about the equivalent forms and timings. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout. All right, so we have our homework here. Right, okay. So we have our homework here. So it's very, it's it goes off of the API that we introduced during lecture, the course messaging board. In this case, we have a very similar endpoint, same thing, posts, the exact same API, right? Um, and we basically just want to kind of, we want you guys to kind of manipulate that. So we have um, kind of an activity that, that displays the notes and then an activity that lets you edit the notes. And then we also want you to kind of play a little bit with single, singletons to kind of um, save local notes and display that as well. So 
a lot of application based off of what, what we learned this week. So a lot of what you kind of need in order to do this is intent to manifest to help switch between activities. And then the like of use for displaying the notes and the cloud notes activity. And then add text for editing the equivalent notes. And then networking, because you have to do get and post requests to get requests to send to retrieve the notes. And then post requests to post notes onto the back end. And then data, of course, because you have to use singleton to kind of um, save, save, save information across your app. So yeah, and here's the URL for the back end. Um, if you want to do simple posts, it would give you all the posts that's been here in the past. I think there's a lot more than this, but yeah.